protect the, the public's health in response to the COVID-19 outbreak, and as permitted by Governor Pritzker's executive orders 2020-07 and 2020-48, this meeting is taking place entirely via audio conference. This conference call is open to the public via audio conference and is being carried live by CAN TV. Those participating by phone are on mute in order to reduce background noise and disruptions. We have a court reporter making a transcript of this meeting. I will begin by taking attendance so it is clear who is participating in this meeting. Please say here after I read your name. Police Board Vice President Paula Wolf. Here. Police Board Member Matthew Crow. Here. Police Board Me Member Michael Eady. Here. Police Board Member Jorge Montes. Here. Police Board Member John O'Malley. Here. Police Board Member Rhoda Sweeney. Judge Sweeney is not currently here, but she I know she's joining. So um, when she arrives, I will make it a point to, um, to mention that she's joined. And Police Board Member Andrea Zop. Here. Also, we have Superintendent of Police David Brown. Here. General Counsel to Superintendent Dana O'Malley. Here. Chief Administrator of Civilian Office of Police Accountability, Sidney Roberts. Here. Chief of the Chicago Police Department's Bureau of Internal Affairs, Karen Conal. Here. Deputy Inspector General for Public Safety, Deborah Witzberg. Here. All right, wonderful. Yes, we now Board member Steve Flores on the line as well. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve Flores, thank you. Um, we will now proceed to the items on the meeting agenda. We will have a time at the end of the call for public comments. Once again, those participating by phone are currently on mute in order to reduce background noise and disruptions. When we get to the public comment portion of the meeting, we will unmute each speaker. Due to an unexpected medical condition expected, affecting a staff member, the board will defer approval of the minutes from the board's July 16th regular public meeting until the se September public meeting. The next public meeting will be held on Thursday, September 17th at 7.30 p.m. Whether this call will be in person or a conference call will be determined closer to the meeting date. Is there a motion to close a series of executive sessions for the purposes of considering personnel matters and litigation as authorized by sections 2C1, 3, 4, and 11 of the Illinois Open Meetings Act? This is Paula Wolf. I'd like to make that motion. Is there Michael a Edy, I second. Thank you. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 The general orders and other directives issued by the superintendent during the previous month are posted on the police department's website. I will now ask Superintendent Brown to provide an oral report. Good evening, board members uh, and Mr. President. Again, let me just go through an item that's prominent in the police department that we've been working on that we shared with the public earlier today, myself and the mayor, uh, regarding neighborhood uh, policing. So the neighborhood policing or community policing has an acronym NPI, Neighborhood Policing Initiative. Uh, and uh, it will be uh, coordinated through district coordination officers or DCOs. And this is a grassroots initiative that's been piloted in the 25th and 15th district for the past uh, year. And what this does, and I need, I like to contrast it to what CAPS does, because CAPS is the longstanding community policing effort uh, that many of you are very familiar with, that is in every district, each of the 22 districts, that does a district-wide community policing effort through primarily uh, meetings and events where the public comes to uh, the police department, either through to the district station or they have another central location. What, what the NPI or Neighborhood Policing Initiative through district coordinating officers do is that they go to the neighborhood. 
They go to each individual person, house by house, block by block, to problem solve, to address specific issues. Uh, this was piloted in the 25th district first, uh, and then it moved to the 15th district. And today we announced that it's going to the 11th district, 10th district, and 9th district. So it's gonna add three additional districts. And it targets a very small geographic area within the district, primarily approximately three beats, which are not the same in every area. Beats can be of different sizes based on uh, both the residential or commercial or industrial aspects of that geography. But the NPI program through district coordinated officers is different than CAPS because these officers are assigned to these three beats, which is smaller than the district-wide focus of community policing. And they actually go to uh, the neighborhood person by person, block by block. They exchange not only uh, their name through an introduction, you know, I'm Officer uh, Brown, I'm here to help you, but they give the person in, the, in these three beats their phone number, their cell number. Uh, they have access to uh, a, the technology within the iPad to address all city services that can help resolve problems that are prevalent in the community. Uh, and there are a lot of, obviously, public safety concerns, but there's oftentimes lighting on the street. There might be grass in a vacant lot that needs cutting that's causing or attracting problems. Uh, what we learned uh, from the pilot programs in the 25th districts and the 15th uh, district is that calls, 911 calls, were reduced by 5%. And what that means is the, that allowed the beat officers to have more time rather than just go from call to call to call, like many of them complain about doing. It freed up 5% of their time to actually have time to address crime issues rather than just what officers describe as chasing calls. Uh, these district coordinating officers not only uh, work with each person in those three beats, uh, they also work with the aldermen, they work with the detectives, they work with area businesses, and they work with sister agencies to resolve nagging uh, concerns uh, from the neighborhood. Uh, these new additional districts, districts 11, 10, and 9, uh, will begin uh, their DCO program, their MPI program, uh, this fall. Uh, the CPD will provide training. And what's different about the training for these officers is that it's uh, led by the community. It is, it is a collaboration with the community an immersion training to learn the culture of the community so that officers are acclimated to the unique uh, dynamics that's happening in the neighborhood. Uh, this community-led training academy is coordinated through uh, one of the people who live in the neighborhood, Vaughn Bryant, and the Metropolitan Peace Academy uh, for their partnership in developing the immersion training uh, program, which is one of the mayor's 90-day uh, uh, reform items. Uh, this training will give the officers a unique view of the challenges in the neighborhood as told by the community members in that neighborhood and stakeholders that live there. Uh, there's a lot to this. Uh, I don't want to take up all the time, but uh, I really want to give an opportunity for us to have a conversation about any questions you may have. Uh, but think about uh, MPI or the DCO uh, program as a grassroots community led officer community member collaboration that seeks to problem solve, um, not just address the symptoms, but just address the root causes of some of the concerns in the neighborhood with the goal of creating more time for beat officers to address crime and to not let little problems in the neighborhood become uh, larger problems uh, that oftentimes takes up a lot of resources to, to solve when you can address the root causes 
and problem solve. The hopes are, as I close, the hopes are that every district would have a uh, neighborhood policing initiative in them where DCOs uh, address uh, problems from the community's perspective in the way that it solves them, along with the training that's led by the community to learn the unique nature of each individual neighborhood. And so I'll, I'll be quiet there and end and listen to any uh, questions you might have or any conversation you'd like to have regarding the Neighborhood Policing Initiative uh, DCO program. Thank you, Superintendent. Any questions, board? Yeah, I, this is Paula. I'll start. Thank you. That was very helpful. Um, other than the reduction of the 5% on the 911 calls, what is a way to measure the effectiveness and how do you actually get an impartial assessment of how the community is reacting? Yes, so th there is a survey instrument that speaks exactly to the second part of your question, but I, I think there's a great antidote uh, to the pilot program in the 25th district. Uh, and a young man uh, came to the press conference with myself and the mayor uh, and, and the Metropolitan uh, collaboration that does the training for our officers. He's a young man that DCO had learned about through going by, by going through it door by door by door. He was on the corner uh, making the wrong decisions, getting in trouble. Uh, the DCA officer uh, found him a job and he's on the right, right path now. Uh, he needed a job. He was making wrong decisions because he was trying to provide for his family. Uh, DCA officers learned that, uh, got him connected with an employer. He was hired and now he's off the corner. And he came to the press conference today to thank the DCO officer in front of all of us uh, and got a rousing a round of applause. Young man, I mean, it's really, I know that sounds like a little anecdote, uh, but that's so encouraging uh, given the challenges we face and sometimes dealing with young men who, but for some positive mentor or some help uh, would otherwise make the right decisions or the right choices. Uh, but that was a job was the root cause of the problem. It, it, it wasn't that this young man was committed to uh, a life of crime. Uh, a job was the solution. Uh, and this was provided through a connection with a police officer. I mean, that is just really exciting. Uh, almost, well, you, you know, just you, you teared up listening to this young man. He's like 19 years old, just so thankful and grateful. Any other thoughts, questions? Superintendent, what, 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 would, what would be success to you for this program? If we look back two years from now, what would you consider a success? That the uh, Neighborhood Policing Initiative began uh, a collaboration of reimagining CAPS and that all CAPS officers uh, were community-led community policing, where they were trained by the community. And it's, it's a little bit of a reimagining, almost like take caps from the district level down to the door-to-door -door neighborhood, street-by-street -street level, where caps officers give out their phone numbers. And it catches hold. And now our TAC teams give out their phone numbers. And our beat officers give out their phone numbers. And uh, everyone can engage a young man like we met today and offer a true uh, root cause problem solved uh, for the community. And then you layer that on with uh, more programs like Police Athletic League uh, or Policing in the Arts. Kids that don't like sports now like arts, but they feel comfortable because now once you help one young man, that story travels in the community. And when you help two, that's even a force multiplier. But when you help uh, a neighborhood and the young people there make better decisions, uh, the, the result will be the most significant drop in crime in Chicago's history. That's success to me, that this takes hold, it catches fire, and it spreads across all the districts, all the neighborhoods. Wonderful, thank you. Any other questions, board? Just a comment, Ian. Um, Superintendent, commend you for getting this program starting. And as you just mentioned, that might be one kid today 
Uh, but 10 in every district, that's 220 kids, equals 400, equals 600, equals 1,000. Not going to be overnight, but it, 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 that's the way it starts. So congratulations. Let's hope this program is very successful. Thanks, John. And I owe you a phone call. Yes, sir. Yeah. Next up, Chief Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, members of the board, Superintendent Brown. Um, uh, I look forward to the opportunity to, to talk to you today about COPA's um, activities over the last month. As mentioned in my comments at the last police board meeting, following the death of George Floyd and the civil unrest, uh, between law enforcement and residents of the city, uh, COPA uh, really um, acted quite swiftly uh, to ensure that we could take in the increase in complaints. And we formed a specialized team and we've been working with local law enforcement officers as well as making sure that we're staying in contact with the aldermen, the activists, faith-based communities and community stakeholders. And as the protests have continued, um, COPA has remained committed to providing the same level of resources that we um, initially deployed uh, in the early months following the George Ford uh, incident, just to make sure that we can provide quick resolution to these investigations. I also wanted to mention that as required by city ordinance, COPA has opened for investigation, six officer involved non-fatal shootings, um, three from the month of Ju July and three from the month of August, including the incident at the 25th district, as well as the Inglewood shooting that occurred on Sunday, August 9th. Um, as we reported in the press release, this shooting um, did involve members of the newly created community safety team. And while there is no video of the shooting incident, COPA has mounted a meaningful investigation that has included the review of pod video. Our ongoing investigative efforts continue to include the search for third party video, as well as additional witnesses. But what I want to make sure um, is to ensure the community that in the absence of body worn camera, COPA can and remains capable of conducting a thorough and objective investigation of this incident, inclusive of the review and analysis of ballistic and forensic evidence. And to members of the public, if you have information about this incident, please contact our office. I also wanted to mention that as part of our community engagement, um, we are continuing to participate in town halls and community meetings, while also supporting and listening to our youth. Um, this Sunday, we will be working, um, we will be meeting with Alderman Maria Haddon at the 49th Ward meeting. And on Tuesday, we will be with the 4th Ward Public Safety meeting with Alderman King. As a partner in police reform and the civilian-led oversight body for the City of Chicago, I want to assure everyone that we remain committed to a fair and thorough investigation of police misconduct and will ensure that we always reach findings on the evidence and facts of the case working in concert with the community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Roberts. I would now call upon members of the public who signed up in advance to speak. Each speaker will be unmuted after I call his or her name. We'll have two minutes to speak and we'll give you a warning at 30 seconds. <clears throat> the first speaker, pardon me if I don't say the name right, Ugochi Ofoha, Ofoha. Right. Yes, okay, we can hear you now. Okay, great. Um, good evening to the superintendent, members of the board, and to everyone listening. My name is Ugochi, and I've been a resident of Chicago for almost 10 years now. I have two points to address. The first relates to COVID and cautionary measures we can all take to reduce the spread of it. We know that masks reduce the spread of illness. I've witnessed too many police officers not wearing masks, so I implore the superintendent to get that under control. There should be no excuse for officers not wearing masks, especially when they are not maintaining six feet from civilians and other officers. My second point is regarding the job of a cop. Superintendent Brown has stated that the job of a cop is to uphold the law. And we all know classic examples of unjust laws. Slavery was law, segregation was law. So that reason isn't good enough. 
If your job is to uphold a law regardless of how unjust it is, I believe that job shouldn't exist. If your job is to defend property by enacting harm upon real life human beings, that job shouldn't exist. All that being said, given the purpose of the police seem to be to protect property and not people, it only makes sense they wouldn't wear masks because buildings can't catch COVID. For the people who believe in good cops, if your job is to plant trees, rescue animals, and also cause harm or end the life of a child, that job should not exist. The job itself is the problem. It doesn't matter how good a person is. Look up the Stanford Prison Experiment if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's not about a few bad apples. The barrel that the apples are in is a toxic waste dump, and the only way for it is to defund the police. The community program and the impact that the superintendent described in the beginning is a solution that doesn't meet the job of a cop. We can reimagine, as the superintendent said, these responsibilities and roles. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Eric Russell. Mr. Russell, can you unmute yourself, please? Mr. Russell, you're unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Eric Russell, the American activist, president of the Tree of Life Justice League. Uh, we're national police accountability advocates that advocate for families whose loved ones have been brutalized, tortured, and murdered by police. Uh, so I'd like to say good evening to the superintendent and to the uh, to the police board. Uh, what I would like to share this evening is that um, our, the, our community's outrage at the fact that uh, this racist killer cop, Sarah Simpkins, who uh, murdered Rashid McIntosh in cold blood back in August of 2014. Since this time, his mother, Cynthia, and the whole community um, had been crying justice for Rashid. This was a case that was even reopened. And now that COPA has spoken, COPA has recommended that this cop be fired. It is difficult for us to be cautiously optimistic because we, Mayor Lightfoot, she re while the country is engaged in a national conversation about rethinking the police, um, the mayor refuses to enact any real sort of police re reform despite being under a federal consent decree. We are shocked that the Chicago police have missed over 50 of the benchmarks uh, to adhere to this uh, consent decree. And what we find more shocking right now is that we want to know when is this racist killer cop who murdered Rashid McIntosh, going to be uh, fired. COPA has did its job and made a recommendation. How can we afford to have a cop who gives false statements, who has lied? We are now, we have a racist, misogynist, xenophobe in the White House. We have a racist corporate counsel in Mark Fleshner. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Your two minutes is up. Um, the next speaker is John Perryman. Mr. Perryman, can you unmute yourself, please? Uh, good, e good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Um, hi, uh, I'm calling regarding issues I brought up in the past all the way back in May. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, report of community input received at the public meeting on May 21st. The date of the report was June 18th. Um, in that, uh, the superintendent agreed to give a plan for how we're policing Garfield Park early next week. Um, that was over two months ago. And um, I've reached out to Mr. Foreman and I've reached out to um, the superintendent's office. I've emailed Sergeant Odoms. I would like the uh, superintendent to explain why I have not gotten this information yet. Yeah, please. Um, superintendent, I'm asking you this question. Can you please explain why I have not gotten this information yet that I was promised uh, two months ago? We, we got it, John. Sorry, technical. Yes, superintendent, please. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't have an explanation why you haven't received all the hard work they've done since we talked. I, I have 
what they should have sent you in front of me and I can I can read through it but there's pretty there's been pretty extensive uh, work from the narcotics unit uh, in the area in the park uh, there's been uh, missions from uh, the 11 district tag teams uh, on several drug locations and we have cases uh, that are being uh, that have been filed uh, the property located at 3455 West Walnut it, it's been under investigation for a problem building. Uh, they implemented 24 hour roving fixed posts and foot patrols uh, from St. Louis to Holman to Walnut Lake. Uh, the store uh, located at 3458 West Lake has been put on notice to monitor the crowds outside the store. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I know we're short on time. Um, can you uh, talk about this specific issue? Because how the police are patrolling and the strategies they're using in the park really matter. Because just yesterday, or a few days ago, I'm taking my kids to the park and they're pulling a dead body um, out of the park because there's bad drugs being sold one block away from where you did all this good work. Um, drug dealers moved one block and we're still having problems. So can you please answer to this specific problem? Why have I not received what was promised to me two months ago per the report of community input received from the police board meeting? I have information that you did receive it. I don't know where the miscommunication is because I have the copy of the report here. Uh, all, all I can do is explain to you all the hard work that's been done there, obviously. Uh, so we, Superintendent, you're still program. dodging. I, I sent an email to Sergeant Odoms immediately. I also let Mr. Foreman know. I feel like what's happening is you guys are making promises, you're not following through. And it's frustrating as someone who is coming in Using the, the reason I'm here at the police board is because commander of the 11th is unresponsive on this issue. We're trying to use our parks, and when we don't use the parks, the city disinvests. They say no one's using the parks. So I would like to know what strategy that was promised to me. It was not given to me. I immediately responded. That was two months ago, June 25th, and I got no response from Sergeant Odoms. I called numerous times to your office, and Sergeant Odoms, um, I finally got a hold of him. I, I'm going to mute you, Mr. Perryman, just for the, for the sake of time. So, so we recognize that there were two things that you asked for. You did receive one of the things. You did not receive the second, the second item. Um, I, I will continue to work with CPD to ensure that you get the necessary information. Um, I do think it might be a good idea for you to um, try to get some additional information about the Neighborhood Policing Initiative. And so well, I'll try to make sure that I can connect uh, connect us all together to ensure that you get the necessary information. Um, the next speaker is June Norfleet. Ms. Norfleet, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. Yes. President Foreman, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you now. Very good. Thank you for this opportunity. For years, we thought the iconic phrase from Apollo 13 was Houston, we have a problem. But actually what was said was, Houston, we had a problem. The leakage of fuel and breathable oxygen from the space capsule was dooming and horrifying. However, it was the teamwork of NASA that prevailed and the crew of Apollo 13 made it home. Teamwork made the dream work. And I am asking that we do that now. We're asking that CPD partner with us, grassroots advocates for things that Communities organized to win is advancing the cadet program so that there is a pipeline from home to public safety careers. Our cadets will help keep CPD's ears close to the heartbeat of our young people in Chicago. We ask you to partner with us, partner with us with businesses so we can further the example that by working with businesses, Cal has been able to reduce some of the pop-up um, parties, so to speak, because of our Good Buddy, Good Business program. We ask that you partner with us in the Harvest a Home program, where we go and harvest reusable material from dilapidated properties. We ask that you partner with us um, so that our residents can do things such as monitor the increase of car rentals on their residential blocks and give their districts a head up in the event that these um, rentals may be used for ill-gotten purposes. 
Yes, NASA's teamwork brought Apollo 13 to triumph instead of disaster. And when you partner as president with, with us, as President Obama said, let me tell you something about Chicago. We don't break. And if we stay together, we won't break. And let me conclude. I've heard uh, our, my neighbors talk about defunding the police. But one thing I have not heard anyone say in that conversation of defunding is what do we do in the interim? Who is here to educate and instill civic? Thank you very much. Sorry, I had to cut you off, Ms. Norfleet. Uh, next speaker is Ms. Jennifer Edwards. Ms. Edwards, can I ask you to unmute yourself, please? Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Good evening. Good evening. Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I'd like to say a big thank you to President Foreman and Mrs. Dana O'Malley for their assistance in helping us uh, plan um, an event uh, that we're excited about uh, with the community involvement and the police department. Uh, the many suggestions that we've submitted um, have originated in conversations with our community group. I'd like to list some of the groups. Uh, to continue the involvement. They are the Red Line Coalition, the South Oak Haven, Brookhaven Neighborhood Organization, the Chesterfield Community Association, the Cook County Sheriff Community Neighbors, the Michigan Indiana Block Club Association, the 79th Street Chatham Coalition, Beat Facilitators from the 6th District, the 6th Ward Accountability Coalition, and I'm sorry, the 8th Ward Co Accountability Coalition, the Greater Chatham Alliance, Reunite Chatham, Do For Self, St. Calabanas, Community Pride, Educational Village Keepers, West Chesterfield Community Association, Grand Crossing Park Neighborhood Network, the Alliance of the Southeast, Chatham Avalon Park Community Council, Maze Deli, Park Manor Neighbors, Grand Crossing Park, Park Advisory Council, Just Christ Ministry, Culver's of 35th Street, and Gathering Point Community Council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Matt Brandon. Mr. Brandon, if I could ask you to unmute yourself. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, good evening, everybody. Good evening, President Foreman, Vice President Wolf, and board. And thank you for the work you do. I know you make tough decisions, and uh, may God continue to give you strength in making those tough decisions. A special shout out to you, President Foreman. And also, this is just a call to shout out all the good things that happened. I want to shout out the men of Englewood for what they did, standing for their community in the face of people who would come. Uh, to create turmoil there. A shout out to the men of Englewood. I want to shout out to Commander Navalis and to Director uh, Brooks uh, for always being uh, able to be contacted. We really appreciate it. Communities organized to win wants to partner with the police department. I want to shout out to the superintendent. You got a tough job. Stand tall. I'm really excited about the new program that you announced. I think that's going to help us. Uh, connect better with the police department and work uh, better to help you on your mission uh, to uh, reduce crime in the city of Chicago. And I want to butcher the English language and forgive me. I just want to say that Dana O'Malley, you the bomb, okay? And thank you for all that you've done. We really appreciate you. And to the men and women of the Chicago Police Department, follow your general orders, your rules and regulations, and you'll be fine. God bless you all and stay safe. Thank you very much, Mr. Brandon. Next speaker, David Dewar. Mr. Dewar, if you can unmute yourself, please. Good evening. Uh, this is David Dewar. I spoke last month, and uh, I live here in the 19th Ward, 22nd, uh, 19th District, 22nd Ward. Um, I wanted to talk about my case, but I, you guys have already heard about that. Uh, I was falsely arrested in 2014. Two officers, Fellman and Devine, and the neighbor Hostie, 
uh, was the complainant. Uh, what I wanted to discuss here, though, was um, just some observation and being fair. Um, I don't believe that police should be defunded. Um, about three weeks ago, I was on a Zoom call, and I did see that the uh, um, Cook County commissioners, 17 of them, voted overwhelmingly 16 to 1 to defund the police. Now, the community has a love-hate relationship with the police, depending on where they live. Uh, they do feel they need protection from criminals and others. Uh, and who do they call first when they need somebody? Well, they need the police. But on the other hand, I see a problem within the police department, as in my case, where they're not admitting and they're not calling out things they've done in the past and they do presently. Uh, when I do submit that information finally to COBA, it shows how they falsely arrested me and they falsified the police report. If we look at George Floyd, George Floyd was fall, um, was you know uh, pretty much murdered. He was murdered. Uh, but if that was not videotaped, who knows what those officers would have gotten away with in terms of uh, his, his death. So the police, in order to not be defunded, the Chicago police, they need to be honest and they need to show the things that they've done in the past and in the present. And that's my comment. Uh, I believe the rule of law should be upheld and I believe, as I showed on my website, DavidDewerForAlderman.com, and public safety, that we should listen to the citizens of Chicago. And that's good that uh, Superintendent Brown is going to implement this program, but the police need to be honest if they want to have some negotiations for reform because they're next. Thank you very much, Mr. Dewar. Next speaker, Cynthia Lane. Ms. Lane, can you unmute yourself? Yes, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, hi. My name is Cynthia Lane, and I'm the mother of Rashad McIntosh, who was killed back in August 24th of 2014 by Chicago Police Officer Robert Fletcher. And um, my reason for wanting to speak tonight is that um, I still have not gotten any justice for my son's uh, murder. Uh, which will actually be six years this coming Monday. Um, COPA did reach out to me and let me know that they recommended for one of the other officers that was also on the scene at the time of the shooting, um, who actually lied about the whole uh, event that took place. Um, and they recommended for him to be fired from the police department. Uh, I have not gotten any, um, no feedback from that. And, 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 and my reason for wanting to speak tonight is that I'm, I'm just hoping that the Chicago Police Board do the right thing and fire this officer because he, he lied contentious, contentiously uh, under oath um, in all of his depositions and uh, you know, before, I guess, the uh, state's attorney or what have you. The um, uh, only reason why the truth came out is because of the video. Um, the video that was uh, shown, I want to say maybe two years ago. Um, and I, I'm still having a hard time um, with the fact that my son is gone. You know, I don't have him anymore. And he left a son behind, which is my grandson, who would never, ever get to see his father no more. So I'm just asking if you can really, really look into the case and do the right thing. This officer lied, and I'm more than sure if he lied to cover up for the shooter, like he said, I'm more than sure the other officers that also was there did lied as well. Um, I'm Thank a mother you. that just... Thank you, Ms. Lane. I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Chief Roberts if, if, if you would like to make any statement before uh, I comment. So, uh, uh, Ms. McIntosh, yes, we did uh, speak with you. Um, and uh, it's my understanding, I believe the matter is actually pending um, before the police board for an actual um, uh, trial on the merits of the case so that the board will be positioned to render a decision. 
Yeah, so that's basically what I was going to say, Ms. Lane. So it's, it, the, it is in the process. Um, a hearing has not been, we don't have it, the, the case in front of us. Yes, as the police board, there will be a hearing. Um, if you would like, <laughs> um, I can get you in contact with Jasmine Rollins, who's on our team. And um, I, I have your telephone number, so I'll reach out to you. And um, we can get in contact and kind of give you a better sense of when the hearing is going to take place. Um, so I will I will make sure that that either I or Jasmine reaches out to you and we can discuss that in a little bit more detail. Um, the next speaker, Laurie Suttle. Ms. Suttle, if you could unmute yourself. Ms. Suttle. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, good evening, Superintendent Brown, members of the board, Chief Roberts. Again, my name is Laurie Suttle. First, I want to correct the minutes of last month's meeting. My name is spelled L A apostrophe capital R I E, not Flora Settle. That's my grandmother. Next, I want to finish the last 10 seconds of my speech from last month's July 16th meeting before I was cut off because I think that there was an important message that was left out. So, literally, picking back up from where I left off. Um, shout out January's 2020 CPD candidates and Mayor Lightfoot's new Use of Forest Community Working Group. Community and faith has always kept me grounded through some of the most challenging times of my life, and I'm so grateful for that. Now, I want members of the public to know that as a member of this new Use of Forest Task Force, today I spoke on the record in federal court about my recent individual experiences regarding police interactions between Chicago police officers and protesters. As I said on the record and will repeat again tonight, currently I do not have the authority to tell you if officers violated the use of force policy, especially referring to recent protests, but I certainly hope allegations and investigations for police misconduct are being taken seriously. Complaints about CPD can also be filed with the Office of Inspector General. Moving forward, I pray that this police department doesn't miss an opportunity to effectively and constitutionally police and to all the people in the city of Chicago and beyond who feel harmed, unheard, scared, or left out, I want to offer you a voice and a seat at the table where, whether that's my use of force task force that I'm on or others beginning shortly. So with that, I hold back and more updates to come. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Ms. Suttle. Next speaker is Flora Suttle. Ms. Suttle, if you can unmute. Ms. Suttle, Ms. Flora Suttle. Okay. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening, everyone, superintendent, members of the board, and um, Chief Roberts. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to say I'm very proud of my granddaughter who just spoke. She's been involved in uh, several projects uh, in the city, uh, use of force, and bringing the community get together. The reason I'm calling tonight is that uh, as always, uh, about my son, Derek Suttle, that's Laurie's father. He was killed by an off-duty black Chicago police officer who was accompanied by his wife. Once the officer shot him, then he killed him. I spoke to you about this superintendent uh, in June. No response from anybody, not even a comment. There's no statute of limitations on a murder or a homicide. So that means I'm not going to go away. Chief Roberts. This case came to the attention of COPA in 2016 before your time. And I was told by your predecessor, the way to pursue reopening this case is to go through COPA. After four years of your getting prepared and, and, and going through your, your building up your new uh, organization, you gave me a verdict and you agreed with IFA. I know that there are three uh, uh, outcomes to a police shooting. You're going to get a, remedy, a disciplinary remedy, you get fired or disciplined. You're going to get a civil remedy where people get paid, or there's going to be a homicide. I never asked for anything but the investigation of a homicide into my son's case. And I'm asking, um, I'm saying to you, we have, I have audio that I'm going to release to the radio and to Black Lives Matter if I can't be heard about my son's murder. Citizen described it for six and a half minutes, six minutes and 45 seconds. I didn't want to go that way. George Floyd, or George Floyd, we saw. Listen to what this woman said about my son, Derek Sutton. 
there is a murder and it's not being addressed. And finally, systemic racism. I've got dates, I've got names, I've got times, I've got a paper trail. Thank you, Ms. Suttle. I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, definitely, we want to make sure that we get you in contact with uh, with Chief Roberts. We're in full concurrence. Uh, your granddaughter, Larie, has been, uh, you know, steady. She's been uh, coming to the police board for several years. We've been continuing to continue to be impressed with her steadfastness about it and uh, and her willingness to step up and and uh, and try to do her part in terms of making the city better. Um, so I apologize that we had to cut you off. Uh, next speaker, CPD Transparency. If you can unmute yourself, CPD Transparency. Hello again. The, the catalyst for the protest against the Chicago Police Department was Derek Chauvin and the three officers who helped him. We saw the thin blue line, code of silence in action. That video of Derek Chauvin kneeling on George Floyd's neck is terrible to watch both because of its brutality and because of the horrific casualness in Chauvin's posture and his expression. It is as if Chauvin does not believe he is dealing with a human being. Chicago cops have got to countenance, count, countenance the possibility of radical disagreement on the most fundamental questions, such as defunding of police. Why is the phrase Black Lives Matter objectionable? The ideal is never treating the person you're speaking with as a hostile combatant. But if someone puts forward views that directly contradict the Chicago police's moral sensibilities, how can the Chicago police avoid hostility? The answer is to take them literally, which is to say, read their words purely as vehicles for the contents of their beliefs. You can hardly say anything to Chicago police without arousing suspicion that you're making a move in a game, one that might call for a counter move. What makes speech truly free is the possibility of disagreement without enmity. The Chicago Police Department is not doing this. Instead, instead every word is classified as friend or foe, literal content can barely be communicated. Very little faith exists as to the rational faculties. Stop retaliating against us just for signing up to speak to the police board. Stop retaliating against us for recording in public. Filming in public is how you seek the truth. Give us name and badge. And if we say the name Ed Siskel, don't change it in the transcript of the police board meeting and then refuse to correct it. Is what we're demanding unreasonable. If the police board announces at the start of the meeting that it is recording the meeting, please actually record the meeting. Do not send cops into Englewood with absolutely. Thank you very much, CPD Transparency. The next speaker is Robert Moore. Mr. Moore, if you can unmute yourself, please. Mr. Moore. Yeah, Mr. Foreman, can you hear me? It's Robert Moore. I can hear Hello. you, but I can hear you, but yeah, I'm going to ask. Mr. Foreman, you can you hear me? I can hear you, but I'm going to ask you to speak a little louder. Mr. Moore. Okay, gotcha, because I've got, I've, I'm in a basement of a storage facility. Okay. I broke off a number of times. Here's what I'm trying to get to in today's meeting here. I'm here in months and years behind. I'm trying here to make a contribution to correcting the problem. First of all, unless... Uh, Thessalonians avenging fire return. There is no such thing as a crisis except for a lack of commandment keeping, and there is no solution to any of these problems except for keeping the commandments and people doing massive penance. I haven't heard anyone use that as the solution to these problems. The problem is sin. That's the basic problem. So until that problem is confronted, uh, admitted, identified, confronted, and engaged, the rest of everything is just going in a vicious cycle that never provides any actual solution. I'm now, I have absolutely no intent of in offending anyone. I have recognized Mr. Foreman's efforts to enable people to speak in these last five or five meetings. This has really helped in terms of utility, being able to get the message into the record during this period. But my head, this is the salutation. If I had to do it over again, 
from childhood, I would have used referring to every nominal government entity via 1 Timothy 5.22, that every nominal government entity has to be considered a presumably programmed as, comma, but possibly not irreversibly so, comma, neo-Nazi, Tobshebe Goyim Haramis, instrument of the imposition of the genocide of the Goyim agenda, comma, nominal government entity representative, and then identifying whoever the person is. Because that's the reality of the, 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 the control of the members of the 10 families. These are the individuals who are behind the U-Haul trucks, the paying for people's transportation and lodging and food, and the paying people to go start riots and loot and mayhem and the rest of this. This is all fabricated. And my, the problem is no one in the last 106 years since the Federal Reserve Act was enacted has gotten to the supra cloud cover global plantation owners component of these problems. This is a series of problems. Um, thank you, Mr. Moore. At this time, all members of the public who signed up to speak have been called. Is there a motion to adjourn? This is Paul Wolf. I move to adjourn. This is Michael Eady. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passes Aye. and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. I appreciate everyone for joining. Thank you.